In this question, we're given the molecular formula of a covalent compound. Here it's N2S2, and our goal is to draw a correct Lewis diagram for this molecule. So, first let's go to our periodic table and find nitrogen, which is N, and sulfur, which is S. So here's nitrogen, and here's sulfur. So we can see nitrogen is in group 15, and sulfur is in group 16. And according to our shortcut, that means that nitrogen has five valence electrons, whereas oxygen is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. So we have nitrogen with five valence electrons, sulfur with six valence electrons, and in our molecule, we have two nitrogens and we have two sulfurs. So that's two sets of five valence electrons and two sets of six valence electrons, which is a total of 22 valence electrons. So that's our first step in our question, figuring out how many valence electrons in total should we have in our diagram. And we can fill that in here. Okay, our next step is to draw our structure. And there are a bunch of steps to this process when we have more complicated elements that aren't just hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. So we've done the first step already, which is counting the number of valence electrons. Next, we're going to look at our layout of our atoms and we're gonna add one bond between each atom so that they're formed into a molecule. So we'll add one bond here, one bond here, and one bond here. And we're gonna keep a running count of how many electrons we have remaining to assign. So we started off with 22 electrons. Now we've just added three covalent bonds. Each covalent bond is worth two electrons. So we've just used up six of our electrons here. So I'm gonna subtract six. I'm left with 16 electrons. So we've got 16, 16 electrons left to assign. Our next step, once we've got one covalent bond on each, is to add electrons to our terminal atoms. Terminal just means the ones on the outside or on the end, so that would be our sulfurs in this molecule. And we're going to add electrons so that they have a full outer shell, or they obey the octet rule. So let's look at this sulfur first. This sulfur currently has one covalent bond, which represents two electrons. We need a total of eight to obey the octet rule. So we need to add six more electrons on this sulfur atom. So we'll add those. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got three pairs and one covalent bond on that sulfur. The other sulfur, we're gonna do exactly the same thing because it's got one covalent bond, which is two electrons. It needs eight in total. So I'm gonna add three more pairs of electrons there so that we've got eight total electrons on our sulfurs. Okay, so we just used up six electrons on one sulfur and six on the other. We used up 12 more electrons. So I'm gonna subtract 12 from my running total. We now have four electrons left. The next step is to put all of our remaining electrons on our central atoms. So here the nitrogens are our central atoms. We've got four electrons left. So let's give them two electrons each. So one pair of electrons each. Okay, that was four electrons. We've used up four more electrons and we're left with zero. Okay, so at this point, we know we have the correct number of valence electrons on our diagram. However, we need to check, do all of our atoms obey the octet rule? So we know that our sulfur atoms obey the octet rule because these are the ones that we did first. We've got one bond and three lone pairs each of which provide two electrons. So a total of eight electrons on each of those. So those are looking good. However, if we look at our nitrogens, this one and this one, they've each got two covalent bonds and one lone pair. Each of those provides two electrons. So that's a total of six electrons for each of our nitrogen. However, they need eight according to the octet rule. But we've already used up for all of our electrons. So we can't just add more electrons, 
the way that we can add electrons to those central atoms is by forming more bonds. So right now, these two electrons are a lone pair on our sulfur, but instead we could draw them as a bond between sulfur and nitrogen, kind of like this. So those electrons become a bond and we can get rid of them. And we can do the same for our electrons over here. So if we take one of these pairs and we change them into a bond, we got rid of that pair and formed it into a bond instead. And now if we count, our nitrogens each have three covalent bonds and one pair of electrons, which each provide two electrons, giving us a total of eight. So our nitrogens now obey the octet rule. And if we check our sulfurs again, even though we made one of those pairs into a bond, they still obey the octet rule because we've still got two covalent bonds, which each bring two electrons and two lone pairs, which each bring two electrons. That's a total of eight. So now all of our atoms obey the octet rule and we have the correct number of valence electrons on our diagram. So this diagram is finished and we're ready to fill out our table to check our work. So first, a number of single bonds. We have one single bond between our nitrogen atoms. Next, the number of double bonds. We have one double bond here between this sulfur and this nitrogen, and another double bond here between this nitrogen and this sulfur. So that's two double bonds. What about triple bonds? We don't have any triple bonds in this molecule, so that's gonna be zero. Finally, let's check the lone pairs. We have one, two on this sulfur, a third one on this nitrogen, a fourth one on this nitrogen, and a fifth and a sixth on this sulfur. So we have six lone pairs of electrons in total. Okay, so that's the question done. The point of the table is just a way for us to check that we got our diagram correct. And just to remind you of our steps, step one was figuring out how many valence electrons are in this molecule, which we did by looking at our periodic table, figuring out how many valence electrons each of our elements have, and then adding those up to get our total. Then we went to our diagram and we added one bond between each atom. We then added valence electrons on the outside atoms, the terminal atoms, and we kept count of how many electrons we had left to add. We added the remaining electrons on our inside atoms. Then we checked the octet rule for each atom. And if necessary, we used some lone pairs to form bonds so that all of our atoms could obey the octet rule. Let's do one more example of this type of question. So here we have CSE2, so one carbon and two selenium atoms. Our first step is to figure out how many valence electrons we have. So let's go to our periodic table. Let's find a carbon, which is here, and SE selenium, which is here. So carbon is in group 14, selenium is in group 16. So based on our shortcut, we know carbon is going to have four valence electrons. And selenium is going to have six valence electrons since it's in group 16. So let's write that down. We have carbon with four valence electrons. We have selenium SE with six valence electrons. And we have one carbon plus two seleniums in our molecule. So let's add that up. We've got one set of four valence electrons from our carbon plus two sets of six valence electrons from our selenium. That gives a total of 16 valence electrons on our molecule. So let's fill that in to check that was right. Okay, so that's our first step done, which is figuring out how many valence electrons we have, which is 16. Okay, our next step is to go to our diagram. We're gonna add one single bond between each of the atoms to form them into a molecule. So there we've got two bonds drawn in total. Each of those is worth two electrons. So we just used up four electrons on our diagram. So I'm gonna keep a running total here. We used up four electrons. We have 12 electrons left. 
The next step is to add electrons onto our terminal or outside atoms. We've got 12 electrons to use. So selenium on the right, let's look at this one first. This currently has one covalent bond, so it's got two electrons. We need to fill up to eight, so I'm gonna add six more electrons there in pairs. So now we've got one covalent bond and three lone pairs of electrons. That's eight in total. And we'll do the same on our other selenium. So that's six electrons from the lone pairs and two electrons from the covalent bond for a total of eight. So we just used up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 electrons. So we've now used up all of our electrons. We've got zero left. Now, usually at this point, any spare electrons we would add onto our central atom, which here is the carbon, but we've already used them all up, so we don't have any electrons to add. Our final step is to check that our atoms obey the octet rule. So we already know that our selenium atoms obey the octet rule because they've got three lone pairs and one covalent bond, which each bring two electrons for a total of eight. Our carbon atom, however, only has two covalent bonds for a total of four electrons. It doesn't have any lone pairs. So carbon doesn't obey the octet rule right now. It needs four more electrons. But we can't just add electrons because we've already used up all 16 of the electrons on our diagram. So instead, we're going to use the electrons that are already on the diagram and form them into covalent bonds. So one of our pairs of electrons from this atom, I can turn into a another covalent bond. And I can do the same on the other side. One of these pairs of electrons, I can turn into a covalent bond. And now if we check for the octet rule, carbon has one, two, three, four bonds in total. Each bond has two electrons, so that's a total of eight. So carbon now obeys the octet rule. And let's check our seleniums. This one has two covalent bonds for a total of four electrons and two lone pairs for a total of four electrons. So that's eight electrons in total. That obeys the octet rule. And our other selenium atom is exactly the same. Two covalent bonds, two lone pairs of electrons, eight electrons in total. That obeys the octet rule. So we now know that our compound obeys the octet rule for each atom and it has the total number of electrons correct based on the valence electrons provided by two selenium atoms and one carbon atom. So our diagram's done, we just need to fill out this table to help us check it. So single bonds, we don't have any here. Double bonds, we have two double bonds on our diagram. Triple bonds, we don't have any triple bonds here. And lone pairs, we have one, two, three, four lone pairs of electrons 